Hello, everybody. Gosh, this is so exciting. I've just moved back after 20 years in this tiny island, which was only 40 miles across, and now suddenly I'm in Britain, and it's just brilliant, brilliant to be here. Um, a little bit about myself. I am a typical Patel um, from East Africa, so third generation East African Gujarati who moved here when I was 14, and then I studied um, you know, um, design and architecture. And my first job as an architect was in Singapore, where I went for one year and ended up staying 20 years. And, um, and I left Singapore three years ago and um, have been spending half my time in India and half my time here. India is a place that I've been visiting for the last um, 20 to 30 years like not just as a tourist, but as um, um, an investigator, an artist, an architect, wh whatever, you know, through work, through, through family, etc. And um, even though I'm sitting on my desk in London um, every day, most of my conversations are on Skype with uh, India. I mean, they start waking me up at five o'clock in the morning and our meetings start and the same with Singapore. So um, I, I think I'm occupying this virtual space more and more. I'm not physically in India quite a lot. I'm not physically here all the time. And I'm kind of in this middle space, which is all about ideas and um, excavations of, uh, of me memories and um, cultural narratives. So um, meeting Hai Ching has been a real highlight <laughs> in my life this year. Thank you. And um, um, that the fact that Narendra Modi was in town recently and uh, him and Cameron announced this big initiative next year of the um, culture year, um, I think has kind of heralded um, this term, Brit India. I hope you like the logo. That's our like, first bash at the logo. But um, do you want to talk about this um, flurry of ferocity? Huh? I will do you will? Okay, go on. No, no, yeah. you finish yours, that's fine. No, no, okay. because it's. Um, can come back. Okay, I can jump a couple of slides. I'll come back. Okay, so um, my, although my background is in architecture and design, I'm very, um, um, I think I've always been compelled to tell stories of individuals who haven't had their stories represented, so underrepresented people, people who are invisible because they're just born in a, a small village or maybe in an obscure part of the world. Um, and, and um, you know, I, 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 get, I get really wound up when I go into a bookshop and I look at... Um, books on world art and then it's just dominated by America and Europe and you know where's where's Gujarat or where's Kenya or you know wh where are all these other spaces so um, the hijacking of world history through um, these large isms is something that I'm trying to crack open by 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 telling stories of, of, of individuals so um, um, a lot of other people call what I do pop art because I guess it's uh, it's um, it's an investigation of popular culture, so that's the culture of everyday people. And um, I, I, I document um, their stories and then I reformat them and, re, um, uh, um, and, and retell them on, on a variety of different applications, which sometimes have a commercial leaning so that they can be propagated through different layers of society, because I'm also trying to break away from this white cubed elitist artistic experience where you just go and buy a very expensive painting and it ends up in some banker's house or something you know so how to how to get these storage stories percolating down through all the different layers of society so whether it's fashion uh, furniture um, you know cars uh, limited edition prints etc that's that's been um, that's been very much a part of this larger project that I'm doing called Planet Pop. And under Planet Pop comes Africa Pop, Asia Pop, Cuba Pop. Under India Pop can be Gujarat Pop. So um, by pop, I mean that I am trying to pop open a story. And um, if I do that uh, enough times, uh, as many times as I can, then I'm popping open um, a different narrative in the world. So. Um, this is a project that I'm currently working on, which will really take off in July, August. Uh, this will be Brit India's first offering. Um, so I've, I've, I bought an old Rolls Royce on eBay, and um, uh, it, was a, it was cheaper because it was this horrible brown color. And um, I, I, um, I composed a very, um, you know, slightly controversial narrative, perhaps, but it's about, it's about um, multi-dimensional uh, multi Britain. And, and, and um, I mean, th there's a lot going on in there. I, uh, you'll see in July, there's, uh, I, you know, I, I brought in 
history and, and Renaissance paintings, and there's a lot of, uh, it's quite cheeky, it's quite dark, but, uh, you know, done in a fun way. So the idea is that, um, um, together with the film crew, I'm going to drive around parts of Britain where there has been a history of a lot of uh, immigration um, and interview individuals who have interesting stories to tell, document uh, these stories, collect them, uh, form a depository, and then um, come up with um, a film and uh, a body of, um, uh, of images and work, which will, um, uh, which will then continue in, in terms of derivatives. You know, by deriv derivatives, I mean it could be uh, it, it can take on many, uh, many different applications. <laughs> so that's the, um, the Diary of Transients project, which is going to be happening later this summer. Um, next week, I'm going to Himachal Pradesh, where I've been spending quite a lot of time recently, because another big um, aspect of my work for the last two decades has been to um, investigate the gap between um, rural parts of the world and urban, um, the urban world. For example, in India, it's a shocking statistic, but every minute, 30 individuals move from a rural area into a city. So just in the last 10 minutes um, that you know, I've been talking probably, yeah. 300 people have moved from um, um, a village to a city. And I, I, uh, my studio is in a city called Pune, which is one of the fastest growing cities in India. And um, I, I, you know, it, it just cannot cope. I mean, our rubbish doesn't get picked up. Our water is not piped in anymore. It comes on water tankers every day. Um, there's traffic jams, it's polluted. You know, I mean, cities are, are, are not coping. And, um, and yet um, the Indian government wants to make 75 new cities by 2030. Um, so I, I feel that there is not enough of a scrutiny on, on the human aspect of, of, of these hollowed out rural areas and what it's doing to our individual identities. And um, even though I was, I was in India um, two months ago when the budgets were announced, and um, uh, the focus this year for the, for the Indian government is to spend most of the money on rural areas. But they're constantly talking about infrastructure, you know, where to give more electricity, how to tarmac roads, where to build schools, etc. And, and that's, that's good and that's important. But where I want to come in is um, to, to, to put the spotlight on individual identities, because the more you can see yourself in the mirror and the more you take ownership of who you are and the narrative that you belong in, the more confident you are as a person, the more self-respect you have, uh, the more creative you become. There's, you know, it, it, gives, it, gives, it ri gives rise to entrepreneurship and, and all sorts of things. But if you don't have this basic self-image and self-identity intact right from the beginning, I think it, 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 it doesn't matter how many jobs you keep creating because, you know, you, it, th there's going to be a, a big gap. So, um, okay, I'll just wind up very quickly. This project is really about, um, it's a, it's a, I'm organizing a month, uh, a, a month's residency in a tiny village called Guner in Himachal Pradesh, where we're inviting 10 artists from different disciplines to come and spend a month there. Um, they form the backgrounds of architecture, music, writing, um, installation, different things. They will come and spend a month in this village and excavate local stories that have perhaps are in the danger of uh, becoming extinct, whether it's old building materials or an old song that's forgotten or an old recipe that needs, you know, that, that, that is just kind of going to die out when the grandmother dies or whatever, whatever, um, whatever um, platform the artist is coming with, they're going to use that um, location for a month to excavate these stories and um, my job, together with my partner's job, um, uh, this half German, half Fra um, Indian guy, Frank, who lives in the village, is to um, amplify these stories and propagate them nationally and hopefully internationally. And if we do this successfully as, an, as a pioneering case study, then we can replicate this in villages all over India. And, um, you know, uh, I, 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 think, I think we would have a, a quite a compelling audience that will take us um, seriously because already... Um, people are lamenting about this big divide. It's just that there aren't enough devices that are measuring the problem in order to even come up with a solution. So this is one such device, and it's a lot of people call it artivism, so it's a cross between art and activism. Right, I think that's my bit done for today.